what do you think would be a great use of our time? What, what would you like to achieve today? I guess to come up with new tools to um, circumvent the anger that still arises mm -hmm. from the trauma that I went through and Aiden went through, who, who now is, well, you know, it's your fault, Papa says, and I'm like, okay, whatever. Mm -hmm. you know you have your relationship with him and this is us and so it's just I just I've shifted and changed in the last year a lot like people have really noticed a change but I'm still feeling I guess just in the, I guess because of the Christmas season and stuff like I felt this anger swelling again and I'm not really I'm my true nature is not an angry person I'm uh pretty light, happy, go lucky. I look at the glass half full. Um, I try to look at the best of everything, but I'm finding that this situation, even though it's been four years now, it's still sort of sometimes bubbles in there and you just want to, I guess I, I need some tool. I'm looking for some tools and help with how I can deal with this, I guess, with because I can't access the physical activity. So, so Cindy, just for the sake of our conversation and setting the right context, of course, I have your email, but just to make sure that I understand fully the place we are coming from, the anger, the, the place that the anger sits, uh, from what I understood is there's a situation in your life that happened where you were in a abusive relationship and correct me if I say this wrong. Okay. So I just feel comfortable mm -hmm. really explaining the situation the way you think is best described, but you were in a abusive relationship. You finally took charge of that relationship and called on the required authorities, uh, to, to kind of part ways, but you have a child in that relationship or had a child from that relationship. And now as the child has grown older, they are reflecting back and also still leaning into the, the partner. Uh, mm -hmm. And that is creating some kind of uh, an anger. Would that be a loosely correct understanding of where this sits? I think so. Yeah. It's, it's like, it's hurt and anger kind of like, it's a, I'm not really understanding it. Mm -hmm. So Siddhi, tell me a little bit uh, from the point of view of, if I was to get you to reflect on, and the, the thing that I want to do first before we get into the tools is to really reflect and understand where does this sit? What is it that is really causing the anger, right? So if we can understand that practices and tools can be a lot more helpful because if you're aware of exactly where can we point, or if not exactly, at least loosely point in the direction that is creating that challenge, then it mm -hmm. makes it easier for us to then resolve it, right? That sense of clarity, right. that sense of awareness is helpful. So if I was to ask you just to discover a little bit more, I understand the overall situation, but where does the anger really sit? Does the anger really sit? Actually, without me suggesting, where do you think anger really sits? Uh, in, in, is it, is it uh, in the situation? Is it in the person? Is it in yourself? Is it in something it's else? Within, it's, 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 in with, it's within me. <clears throat> like I feel the anger in, in the pit of my stomach. Mm. Tell me more. Um, well, I, I know it's about my own stuff too. Um, when I was a kid, um, I went through, I saw my father abuse my mother and I got in the middle and ergo, I got it too. So, um, but, um, and then there was that sense of abandonment when my parents split um, so I know that's part of it. Um, and that stuff comes up a bit, but it's also, um, I guess it's the lack of acknowledgement from other people's, um, in the, um, family unit, um, that, you know, deny what happened and it's okay it's like well um the, like it was my ex's grandson that we raised his parents were drug addicts the boy's parents were drug addicts so we took him on um his biological father's clean and sober now he's he's got transitioned to his biological father because of this situation 
Um, and they're like, you know, well, he's my dad and, and that happened. And I'm like, yeah, but it's history repeating itself. And then it's like, Aiden's now like, you know, well, you know, the police came, they arrested him, it's your fault. And, and that we, the family broke up and I'm like, no. So I guess it's, it's that stuff. I, I know I can't control it, but it's like, it's, it's just the denial and the, the, I guess I can't think of the word right now, but it's just, it's just the total disconnect that it didn't happen. <laughs> and anytime I bring it up, I'm the bad person. So yeah, so that's where the anger comes from, I guess. So Cindy, as you're reflecting, the, the two two parts that you said to what we, we were just discussing first was there has been a situation in past where between your parents, it was a similar story. There was mm -hmm. an abusive relationship that you were a part you were a part of because you were part of that, you know, the family. Yeah. And secondly, it tend to have repeated itself a few years later in your own life. Now, if I was to, if I was to ask you to reflect on or, or inquiry wise, if we were to lean into the inquiry of what is it that really, what is it that, that you really feel about your past relationship? like the abusive relationship that you had. The, the, the reason for this discovery is what we are really trying to figure out is we're trying to figure out the root of, mm -hmm. of where it may stem from. Um, conceptually, what I, I am hoping for us to discover or understand is what role is a, our expectations playing in this? What mm -hmm. is the role that our past stories might be playing in this? what may be a role that our behaviors might be playing in this and what is the emotional resolve that we really need, right? Mm -hmm. so, so I'm hoping that we'll discover some or all of it today. So okay. let's explore firstly the story around it, right? So story, uh, by story, I mean, what has been, what mm -hmm. has created your past because a lot of times what happens is we, we carry our past in our present and, and right. rightly so because that is sometimes the learning that, that we have uh, captured from the past, but sometimes we mm -hmm. carry behaviors of the past as well. So I wanna explore a little bit more about how was this uh, relationship that you were in uh, that was not healthy, of course, clearly, and uh, how, could have, how could that have impacted the, the person that you so love now? The, the Aiden, I think is what you said was. Yeah, right? um, I think I'm a very giving person, like, and, I was like a people pleaser. Now I'm kind of shifted, but I was very giving. Like I would give you the shirt off my back before I would do something for myself. Like that's who I, I was. And I still am to a point. Um, and I gave of everything. Like I gave emotionally, financially. Um, and then I was kind of left on the street with the two dogs. <laughs> so I ended up with nothing. Um, my savings were gone, everything. So um, I thank God for a friend that I've known since my 20s who took me in. Um, but I think that's the underlying issue. It's like I gave and I basically got... Um, Tossed to, toss to the curb, basically, and left to your own devices. And to me, that's just so wrong. But in other people, it's okay. That's their behaviors and how they treat people. And I understand that. And um, I've done a lot of work to move past that. But it's just when um, you're still being blamed and there's no um confirmation of yeah that did happen um it's like it didn't you know what i'm saying like there's no um not reinforcement but you know the word i'm looking for 
anyway. Thank you. I hear you. Um, yeah, so it's just, you wonder, you, you know, I raised this little boy like my own. Um, I love him dearly. Um, and it's like, you're at a point like, you know, what was that? What was that blip in my life that just happened? And it's like, I have moved on. Um, I can see people's personalities similar to that now. Like I see red flags and I run. <laughs> Whether it's at work, um, through friends, whatever. Um, so, but yeah, so it's just, um, it's coming up with ways to understand it when it flares up. And um, not let it affect me to the point where I get angry. That's kind of it in a nutshell. <laughs> I, I see you, Cindy. Cindy, you mentioned that in the past you have had, uh, you found yourself people pleasing and doing things and doing things for people and that leading you to uh, to some pretty intense experiences in life. Mm -hmm. Do you feel or do you think or do you kind of would you lean in to to see if this was this was true in this scenario where there was a certain amount of give that you have offered in this relationship with, with Aiden and that, that giving has led to certain attachment that may have mm -hmm. happened with a particular person that may currently has led to a hold in your own life. That, sorry, I didn't hear that. That has led to this person's hold in your life. Uh, what I mean um, by that is, um, if I was to reflect on what you said, uh, and this is me projecting, right? So take it with a pinch of salt. It may be completely inaccurate, uh, but we have limited time and I try to try to do my best to help more than uh, try to, you know, make it more interesting. I try to make sure that you go winning at the end of our conversation uh, because that's more important to me. So, so what I'm really trying to project here is what tends to happen with us as people mm -hmm is there are certain patterns that we always follow, right? There's, there's inherent right. natures of our, that we have developed because of our past programming, our childhood, our, our realities in the past. And often those past programming or that past storytelling or past behaviors that we have embodied and taken on are hard to lose. And they are unconsciously right. in our minds and unconsciously in our being. One of the patterns that you shared, which is people pleasing or taking care of somebody more than, than you need to or have to, what it has is every single time you do more and more of that, it's not only unhealthy for you in the moment, what it also tends to do is the person that you're trying to people please gets a hold on you, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. unconsciously this is not a conscious transaction they're not trying to get a hold on you but because you are so interested and so bent over to support somebody help somebody please somebody mm -hmm. it it unconsciously unconsciously you become uh, not dependent but you're always willing to get their acceptance you want mm -hmm. them to love you accept you for for and you would do things that otherwise wouldn't make sense if you took out that relationship <clears> right <throat> So what, because of that happens is sometimes our emotions, not sometimes, all the, all the time, our emotions are our compasses, right? right? They are, they're really just telling us what's not working out in a way or what's working out, depending on mm -hmm. what emotion is showing up, right? If anger shows up, it's a compass of frustration. It's a compass of not being fulfilled, a particular expectation that you have of somewhere or some relationship, right? In the relationship that you and Aiden have, if you've, demonstrated the tendency that you showed in the past, which is where you did much beyond mm -hmm. what uh, a mother or a grandmother would have been expected to do for a person because the kind of person that you are, you mm -hmm. may have had two things that might've happened. First is Aiden unconsciously have a hold on you, right? Because you, you want his acceptance, you want his love, you want him to approve of what you did and what you are doing right now. Mm -hmm. And secondly, there may be a certain expectation that you have unconsciously built in that relationship, mm -hmm. right? 
Now, either of those scenarios, when you don't fulfill an expectation of yourself or somebody doesn't fulfill an expectation of yourself, you get frustration, sad, angry, all these emotions show up depending on what the relationship is, right? Mm -hmm. So it may be a big possibility that you have an unconscious expectation of Aiden as a person, as your child, as your grandchild. And because of that, you are now feeling the burn every single time he doesn't meet that expectation. That expectation might be simply he will, of course, understand me and support me and understand my point of view. Mm-hmm. Let's say that's all the expectation. It's not even mm-hmm. wanting something more than that. Yeah. Because the person is not meeting your expectation, you're getting angrier and frustrated and, and you know, unhappy with that relationship. At mm-hmm. the same point of time, it is a possibility that because Adrian unconsciously controls you without wanting to do that, right? Because of your nature of people pleasing or your nature of giving, even when Aiden's not trying, it's on, you are seeing the pain or you're experiencing the, the pain because your primary, uh, not primary, but one of your key drivers, which is people pleasing or mm-hmm. having people love and accept you is not mm-hmm. getting fulfilled. So right. you are having a double whammy in a way. All right. You are you're not meeting your own expectation and Aiden's also not meeting your expectation. Do you feel what I just shared may set a little bit different context to mm-hmm. what you may be experiencing right now? Yeah. No, there is an expectation. Yeah. Is that is that true? Did I land correctly here? Oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, okay. Cool. I wrote is it there down. an expectation of yourself, or is this expectation more from Aiden, or both are true? Um, I think both. Mm. Um, because I expected him to understand what happened because he was also hurt physically in the process. Um, but that's not the case. So, um, in his little world, he has his reality and then I have my reality. So like I have explained to him, like you have your relationship with your papa and, and you know what happened and I can't have a relationship with people that treat people that way. And you and I have our relationship. So, um, and maybe his expectation also isn't being met and he's acting out because this, his little world came tumbling down. So I'm yeah. going to work on two techniques with you, just in mm-hmm. the interest of giving you something that you can use. So the first thing that I want to share with you is, is, is dissociation of the, of the particular event uh, from the point of view not, not dissociation, but more so stepping out of the view of what's happening and mm-hmm. really seeing what's happening. Here's what I mean. You see, we look at our lives from our point of view because that's mm-hmm. the only point of view we have on default, right? I look at something, that's what's happening. It's right. projecting my truth on the situation <clears throat> itself. Most of the times it's very far off from the actual situation of what's happening, right? So if we step away, from our situation for a minute. And you can do this exercise. Say Mm -hmm. an event occurs between you and Aiden, and there's a dialogue exchange that happens, or there's a behavior exchange that is there. If you say after the, after matter of fact, once it has happened, you step away from it. And you say, Mm -hmm. let's watch it like a movie, as if I was in a movie theater, and Mm -hmm. this was just happening in front of me, right? When you are watching in a movie theater in front of you, you can see both sides a lot Mm -hmm. more clearly right? Because you're not attached to either of the characters. They're just characters being played by great actors, right? Mm -hmm. So you will, of course, be able to see Cindy's point of view, right? You'll be able to say, okay, this is why Cindy is saying what she's saying. She has seen what has happened in the past. She knows this is a repeating pattern. The person hasn't really healed themselves. This is going to end up bad. And so Cindy is being a protective person that she must be because she loves Aiden. But what will happen is you'll start to see how Aiden sees that picture, Mm -hmm. right? And a lot of times, and I don't know how old Aiden is, but if he's a teenager, if he's, even, he's a teenager. So if you would be able to, and I'm, I probably, it's easy for me in this moment to step away, but I'm sure it'll be easy for you once you start watching it like a movie, because mm-hmm. you are, you're an understanding person. You can lean into other people's experiences. Mm-hmm. And as you lean in and you'll go, if I was Aiden's age, 
if you were Aiden's age mm -hmm. and you were, you know, just growing up with grandma, right? And that's all you had for, say, past four or five years. Mm -hmm. And finally, you had a chance to have a father figure back in your life. And it's not only a father figure, he's actually your father, mm -hmm. right? So it's not just somebody that is, and Aiden's a, is a boy, right? Mm -hmm. Right. So he's, he's looking for a male figure, right? And this yeah. is the first male figure that he had ever interacted with and finally has a chance again mm -hmm. to interact with this father figure. If you look at it from that point of view, suddenly you understand why he would not even care if this relationship was still abusive. Mm -hmm. because he's not, he's seeing love in that abuse. Right. He may not even recognize that that is abuse that he's experiencing. Mm -hmm. Right. So what yeah. it does is it builds an understanding that otherwise is hard to have in that moment, because we start to project from our point of view and then comes frustration and anger. But once we look at it from their point of view, once we watch this like a movie, now comes compassion. Life com now comes empathy because now you go, I see why you're doing it. I still think it is wrong. I'm not saying that, sure, do whatever you want to do. That's not what empathy is. Uh, mm -hmm. What you are saying simply is I can understand the experience that you may be seeking even when you know it's not good for you. Right. Right. So it builds, it takes you from hopefully anger and frustration mm -hmm. and feeling like you're not doing good enough as a person or they are not li living up to your expectation to saying, I understand you. I hear mm -hmm. you. I empathize with you. I, I, I can relate to you to some degree, even if not completely, because it's hard to relate when you are, you have so many emotions fighting at the same time. But what you're really trying to do is we are trying to shift the emotion of anger and frustration to the emotion of empathy and compassion. Right. Right. Because when we are empathetic and compassionate for the person that we're dealing with, it's easier to have a conversation mm -hmm. because it never bottles up to an emotion of um, frustration and anger, which is not right. a good place to talk from yeah. because the person is like, you're just angry. I don't want to talk to you versus if you're empathetic, it's a very different conversation that happens because now you're trying to build an understanding mm -hmm. on what is better for them, what is better for you, what is better for your relationship. And mm -hmm. it's an easier dialogue to have. Do you think that could be something, Cindy, that you can explore? Yeah. As a technique. Okay. So that would be something that even if you have a blow up between you and Aiden, I would ask you to do it as a reflective exercise. What mm -hmm. will happen in over time, once you've done it four or five or six times, um, after certain events, certain experiences, you'll find that you'll naturally tend to lean into it. You mm -hmm. won't have to step away after while you will be in the experience you'll right. be able to empathize because now you have looked at that event in multiple oh, ways right. to try to build that understanding. You see, one of the key things and one of the key things to change is that we think we can change somebody. We that's can. actually not possible, no, right? I know that so part. <laughs> we can't do anything to change Aiden's point of view. What we can do is we can walk with them, mm -hmm. right? And you, when you walk with someone, what tends to happen is because you're not trying to change them, you're not trying to fight their experience, you're trying to just go through their experience with them, just like a supporter, it's mm -hmm. easier for them to communicate with you when the experience is getting intense or experience is getting uncomfortable or experience needs, to, needs a dialogue. It's easier for them to seek mm -hmm. and it's easier for them to listen okay. versus when we try to change them. And that's the common thing that happens in family. We try to change our family members because we love them so much. I get it, right? But the challenge is when we try to change them, the first response we get from them is, who are you to tell me? Yeah, because that's true. Family, like, family like always, has baggage. It does. Like I've always tried to come from the place where it's like, I love you and accept you for who you are, no matter what that looks like, right? But then certain things come up and it's like, you just where it's coming from <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's, that's always that's that's like how I try to have a relationship with everyone right so and before that before this past year that wasn't the way I thought so I've really shifted and and changed you're never too old to change <laughs> never never um, my second um, suggestion of technique for you is you're so on point when you say 
um, if I could just go to the gym, I could release the tension and the energy that is probably stuck because of anger and frustration, which mm-hmm. is a beautiful way. And it's unfortunate that Vancouver is, uh, is shutting down gyms again. Um, my invitation would be is if there is something that mm-hmm. you can do at home, uh, yeah. could it be that you could sign up for an online yoga school? and do a little bit of yoga because yoga does have calming energy. Now, I'm not saying it works for everybody. Like, for example, yoga doesn't work for me. I have to do strength training. I have to pick up weights, the right, for me to yoga, release my energy. The only kind of yoga that works for me is Kundalini, and mm-hmm. my roommates don't like the chanting. <laughs> okay, but you <laughs> could you could use headphones. Oh, that's true. Yeah, you could use headphones, and you could do it in your room. And, and you could do it at times when if there is at least some availability of people to, to travel, I have no idea what is available in Vancouver and what is not. But mm-hmm. if there is like, okay, there's a time when everybody else is out, that's when Cindy does her, her thing because she needs to organize her energy levels in a particular way so she can, you know, uh, really organize her mind as a consequence of managing her, her body. Uh, and that's what uh, would be another way of doing it. So it could be yoga. Yeah. It could be simple things. Again, it, it's it's more about moving the energy. It can mm-hmm. be dance. It can be weightlifting. It mm-hmm. could be just getting some dumbbells and just picking it up for, for a little bit, doing some squats. Anything yeah. that moves your body, moves mm-hmm. the energy in the body, and that allows for that anger and frustration to uh, leave. kind of leave the body, right? So it's, it's a very somatic model of releasing emotional energy that might be stuck or might be concentrated in the body part. Another way to do it, which is not as, it's still somatic, but doesn't require you to actually work out or do physical activity is to f- try and see if you have a good association with your body. Every time emotion comes up, you will be able to spot where in your body you experience that emotion. Mm-hmm. Do you feel you have that uh, chance in your body? Where you can actually experience where the bo- where you sit, where that emotion sits in your body. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's usually you know? in the pit of my in my belly. Fantastic. So you are really well connected to your body. Not everybody can feel that. Sometimes people are so dissociated from their bodies they can't actually figure out where the emotion is. But mm-hmm. if you know where your emotion is, there's a greater possibility for you to concentrate your meditation on it and work on releasing it. The way to there are many many different uh, models of releasing emotional tension in your body. The one that I prefer is to focus our attention towards it, put your hand on it, and then pass energy through your entire body, focusing on this particular area. Pass white light through your entire body, focusing on that particular area, whatever that is, that this emotion is stuck, and it tends to over. 10 to 20 minutes, release that emotion. Sometimes faster, depends on the person, yeah. actually. No one to give timelines to this, but it really depends on the person. So that would be another way that you can do that, again, is not intrusive to people that may be sharing space with you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Do, do you feel any on all of these could work for you as techniques? Yeah, I'm going to give them all a try. Cool. What else, as I'm sharing all of this, as I am discussing this with you, what comes up for you? What do you think Uh, could be a hurdle going forward from here? I think when you say hurdle. Or a challenge or something that you feel like, oh, this is not going to work. I try not to think that way. Um, Fantastic. I... um, I think that the hardest thing will be doing the disassociation like stepping back and that's going to be the hardest that'll be the 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 big challenge um because i've i've worked on that in the past and then i find this stuff still (laughs) comes up right so like stepping back and looking at it like a movie probably um is a better way to do it because i would just go well that's the way he feels this is the way i feel and i step back but um looking at it from a different lens, I think will um, be very helpful. But like I said, it'll be it'll be the more challenging. But I will be working on it. Mm-hmm. So let me give you two things. Firstly, the trick in that dissociative technique is to not only look at that movie screen, but to actually put yourself in shoes of Aiden. Right. So that's yeah. the trick. That's where yeah. empathy is going to start rolling in, and it'll become easier for you to do it. And secondly is, and this is a big piece for 
not just emotions, for pretty much anything in life. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like you have intuitively understood it, but I just want to say it out aloud just to make sure that it's reflected back to you, is acceptance of the journey. Mm -hmm. there is there is going to be days that are going to be hard days there are going to be days that are going to be easy days there are going to be seasons like we were talking about coincidentally as we were starting the call just talking right. in context of like overall world right now right so there are going to be seasons and such is yeah. life uh, what we want to see is how we can go through these seasons in the most beautiful way mm -hmm. like if winter is coming let's layer up right if it's summer let's you know get out more easily, whatever that is, that is seasonal, we would change yeah. our attitude based on the season, right? Just like in right. life. Right? Yeah. If it's rain, you go out with an umbrella or a coat or something, yeah. right? If it's going to be storm season, you stack up on the food and make sure you're indoors and you've got your resources set up. So yeah. if, you, if you look at what is going to happen next as just seasons that are going to happen, Mm -hmm. They're going to be seasons and they just change daily. That's the only difference. They're not like a big chunk of season. They can change on a day-to-day -day basis. Okay. It, it becomes easier for us to say, okay, what do I need for this season, right? So also mm -hmm. think about resourcefulness within yourself is to say, okay, if I'm going to get into a season where it's really hard to say, communicate in this relationship with Aiden or with her, his father and so forth, mm -hmm. maybe it might require you to say, okay, I need to build an armor for those times. Like these are my three new practices that I will do because it helps me, you know, regulate myself a little bit mm -hmm. better and be in that relationship a lot more easily. So, so look at the rest of the time that you're going to have as seasons that you're going to have. And mm -hmm. hence, you might have a toolkit for a particular season because that's how you show up in that right. particular time.